Imagine a time when Europe wasn't the diverse, bustling continent we know today. It was a wild landscape, populated by small groups of hunter-gatherers, moving from place to place in search of food. But then, something extraordinary happened. A revolution, one that didn't involve weapons or conquest, but seeds and soil. This was the Neolithic Revolution, a dramatic shift from a life of hunting and gathering to one of farming. It's a transformation that changed not just the way humans lived, but the very genetic makeup of the populations across Europe. In today's video, we're going to unravel the fascinating story of Europe's earliest farmers. But we're not just going to talk about how they changed the land, they changed us. Through modern DNA analysis, we can trace their genetic footprint, uncovering the deep connections between ancient farming communities and the people who inhabit Europe today. So, grab your shovel and put on your research gloves, because we're digging into the genetic history of Europe's agricultural pioneers. About 12,000 years ago, humanity was living in a very different world. The Ice Age was receding, and people were beginning to move away from the nomadic lifestyle of hunting and gathering. Instead, they began to settle in one place, planting crops and domesticating animals. This was the dawn of agriculture, and with it, the Neolithic Revolution. The shift from a hunter-gatherer society to an agricultural one was nothing short of revolutionary. Before farming, groups of people had to constantly move to find food. Life was precarious, dependent on the availability of wild plants and animals. But when humans learned to cultivate crops like wheat, barley, and rice, something incredible happened. Populations could grow. Settlements began to form, and the foundation for modern civilization was laid. But how did farming spread to Europe? It wasn't an overnight process. Early farmers began migrating from the Fertile Crescent, the lush region spanning parts of modern-day Turkey, Iraq, and Syria. They carried with them new ideas, tools, and, of course, seeds. Slowly, they spread westward across the continent, planting the seeds of agriculture wherever they went. And this movement wasn't just cultural, it was genetic. Over time, these early farmers would blend with the hunter-gatherer populations they encountered, leaving a permanent mark on Europe's genetic landscape. The Neolithic Revolution fundamentally changed the trajectory of human history. It marked the beginning of permanent settlements, the rise of cities, and the eventual development of modern societies. But the story doesn't end with the land. Our genes, our very biology, carry the imprint of these early farming pioneers. And that's where the DNA of Europe's first farmers comes in. So, who were these early farmers? The people who brought the Neolithic Revolution to Europe? They were not the indigenous hunter-gatherers already living there, but newcomers, migrants from the Near East. These early farmers were part of a larger wave of migration that began around 10,000 years ago, following the retreat of the glaciers after the Ice Age. They brought with them not only farming techniques, but also new cultural practices that would reshape Europe. The genetic legacy of these early farmers is fascinating. Through DNA analysis, scientists have been able to trace their origins back to the Near East, specifically the Fertile Crescent. This was the birthplace of agriculture, where people first learned to cultivate crops like wheat and barley. From there, these groups began migrating westward, bringing their farming knowledge along with them. As they moved into Europe, they gradually replaced the older, hunter-gatherer populations. But the spread of farming wasn't uniform. Different regions of Europe were impacted in different ways. In some areas, the early farmers mixed with the local hunter-gatherers, creating a genetic blend. In others, the farmers created entirely new communities. Over time, these early farming communities grew, and their descendants would go on to form the backbone of European civilization. Today, the genetic legacy of these early farmers can be traced in the DNA of modern Europeans. While we are all a mixture of different influences, the genes of the first European farmers are still present, particularly in populations from southern and eastern Europe. Through advances in ancient DNA research, scientists have been able to map this migration and better understand how these early agriculturalists shaped the genetic landscape of Europe. Now, you might be wondering, how do we know all of this? How can we trace the DNA of people who lived thousands of years ago? 
The answer lies in the incredible advancements of modern science, particularly in the field of ancient DNA research. By extracting DNA from ancient human remains, bones, teeth, and even hair, scientists have been able to map the genetic structure of ancient populations. These genetic studies have provided us with a treasure trove of information about the movements, intermingling, and evolution of early human populations. For the first time, we can trace the genetic legacy of the earliest farmers in Europe, linking them to modern populations. Through mitochondrial DNA, which is passed down the maternal line, and Y-chromosome DNA, passed down the paternal line, we can draw precise genetic connections between ancient populations and their modern descendants. One of the most groundbreaking studies in this field was done by the Human Genome Project, which analyzed the genetic material of ancient human remains from across Europe. By comparing these ancient DNA samples with those of modern Europeans, scientists were able to piece together the migration patterns of these early farmers. It turns out that much of Europe's genetic makeup today can be traced directly back to these early farming populations. The results were astonishing. The Neolithic farmers left an unmistakable genetic imprint on Europe that still persists to this day. As DNA research continues to advance, we're likely to uncover even more surprises about the ancient people who gave birth to European agriculture. Every new study reveals more about the complex tapestry of genetic and cultural influences that have shaped the continent. So, how can we tell the difference between the genes of the hunter-gatherers and the early farmers? The answer lies in the genetic markers that are unique to each group. Hunter-gatherers, who lived in Europe before the spread of farming, had different genetic traits than the agriculturalists who followed. These groups were genetically distinct due to their different lifestyles. Hunter-gatherers relied on a diet of wild plants and animals, while farmers cultivated crops and domesticated animals. This shift in diet had a significant impact on their genetics. For example, some of the early farmers in Europe had a gene variant that allowed them to digest starch more efficiently. This adaptation was crucial for a farming lifestyle, where grains like wheat and barley formed the cornerstone of the diet. In contrast, hunter-gatherers did not have this gene variant to the same extent. Additionally, the arrival of farming led to a major demographic shift. As farming spread across Europe, it allowed for larger, more stable communities to form, which eventually led to population growth. This population boom can be seen in the genetic data, where the genetic diversity of early farmers is much higher than that of the hunter-gatherers they replaced. Over time, these early farmers and the indigenous hunter-gatherers began to intermix. As a result, many of the genetic markers of the hunter-gatherers were passed down to modern Europeans, even though their way of life had long since disappeared. This genetic mixing is a crucial part of European ancestry, showing us how cultures, ideas, and genes blended together over millennia. The spread of agriculture across Europe is one of the most fascinating migrations in human history. Imagine, over the course of several thousand years, farming techniques spread from a small region in the Near East all the way across the European continent. It wasn't an instantaneous process, it was gradual, like the slow unfolding of a story that took thousands of years to write. But how did this transformation happen? Starting around 10,000 years ago, early farmers from the Fertile Crescent, located in present-day Turkey, Syria, and Iraq, began to move westward, bringing with them their agricultural knowledge. They traveled through the Balkans and into Greece, before slowly making their way northward and westward across the rest of Europe. This migration wasn't just about people moving, it was about the movement of ideas, technologies, and practices that would transform entire societies. As these early farmers spread, they came into contact with indigenous populations who had been living as hunter-gatherers for thousands of years. The result was not simply one group replacing another, but a complex process of interaction. Some regions saw a complete replacement of the old hunter-gatherer ways of life, while in other areas, there was a fusion of farming and hunting-gathering cultures. This blending of populations, through both migration and intermarriage, left its mark in the genetic profile of modern Europeans. The diffusion of farming was not uniform. Some areas, like the Mediterranean, adopted agriculture relatively quickly, while northern Europe saw a slower transition. In fact, 
it took several thousand years for agriculture to fully reach the northern parts of the continent. The spread was influenced by climate, geography, and even cultural factors. But regardless of the pace, the process fundamentally reshaped the landscape of Europe, both physically and genetically. These early farmers didn't just transform how people lived, they reshaped the very genetic makeup of Europe. The movement of early farmers was a dynamic and complex process, and we're only just beginning to understand the full scope of how it impacted the continent. By studying their DNA, scientists are uncovering the intricate story of how farming spread across Europe, slowly transforming the people, their societies, and their genetic legacy. The arrival of agriculture had a profound impact on European populations, not just in terms of lifestyle, but also in terms of growth and genetics. As farming spread throughout Europe, the way people lived changed dramatically. Instead of a small, mobile society of hunter-gatherers, communities began to settle in one place, building permanent homes and villages. The domestication of animals and the cultivation of crops allowed these communities to thrive and grow, leading to a population boom. This rapid population growth had far-reaching consequences, not only for the people of Europe, but also for the genetic makeup of the continent. With the shift to farming, larger and more stable communities were able to form, which created the conditions for higher fertility rates and, subsequently, a population explosion. This demographic shift is reflected in the genetic data. Early farmers contributed to the rise of large, genetically diverse populations that would go on to shape modern European societies. But it wasn't just the genetic legacy of the farmers that left a lasting mark on Europe's genetic landscape. The interaction between farmers and local hunter-gatherer populations played a crucial role in shaping the genetic diversity we see in Europe today. As the two groups met, they didn't just exchange farming techniques, they exchanged genes. This interbreeding between farmers and hunter-gatherers created a genetic blend that can still be traced today. The introduction of agriculture also had social implications. Farming allowed for the development of new social structures as people no longer needed to constantly move in search of food. This led to the creation of villages, towns, and eventually cities. Social hierarchies became more complex, and the division of labor grew more specialized. These changes are not just part of Europe's cultural history, they are embedded in the genetic history of the continent. As the centuries went by, farming became more widespread, and agricultural communities became the foundation of European society. The genetic legacy is still present in the populations of Europe today, even though farming has long since become the dominant way of life. The impact of early farmers on Europe's population is undeniable, and their genetic influence can still be seen in the modern genetic makeup of Europeans. So, what can we learn from tracing the DNA of Europe's earliest farmers? For one, we gain a deeper understanding of how agriculture transformed not just the way people lived, but also their genetic makeup. These early farmers left behind a rich legacy, both in terms of the changes they made to the land and the lasting impact they had on the genetic landscape of Europe. Today, the descendants of these early farmers can be found in populations all across Europe. Their genetic imprint is still present, even in modern individuals. By studying their DNA, we can trace the migrations, cultural shifts, and intermingling of populations that shaped the continent. Through this research, we are uncovering a complex and dynamic story, one that highlights the interconnectedness of human populations and the lasting impact of agricultural innovation. Understanding the DNA of Europe's earliest farmers also allows us to appreciate the incredible resilience and adaptability of these ancient people. They didn't just change the way the land was used, they changed the course of human history. The spread of farming across Europe marked the beginning of a new era, one that paved the way for the rise of cities, the development of complex societies, and the eventual emergence of modern Europe. In the end, the legacy of Europe's first farmers is a testament to the power of innovation and the way in which human societies evolve over time. The DNA of these early farmers serves as a reminder of the incredible journey humanity has taken, from small, nomadic groups to the complex, interconnected world we live in today. As we continue to study ancient DNA, we'll no doubt uncover even more fascinating insights into the origins and legacy of Europe's earliest farmers.
and the profound impact they had on shaping the genetic landscape of Europe. Thank you for joining us on this deep dive into the ancient world of Europe's first farmers. If you've enjoyed this journey through history, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more fascinating explorations into the past. And as always, let us know in the comments what you found most surprising about the genetic legacy of these early agriculturalists. See you in the next video.